What's going on Paisanos? V here, and today we have Shadow Invoked Versus, and in today's video we are going against an Emancipated Prank Kids, the Rocks as a lot of people call them. Now, this is a really cool matchup because what this shows is how this deck is so good at breaking boards. I know some of you guys always wonder, can Shadows break boards? Because I always say it, and if, unless you're watching my live streams, you really don't, it's really hard to, to look at a deck and say, how can it do it? Uh, once again guys, if you want to check me out on the live streams, check me out on Twitch. Twitch TV, YGL underscore Paisano, links will be down below. If you want to see this deck being played whenever I do live stream, live stream just about almost every day on the weekdays, uh, sometimes on weekends as well. So opponent, so in the beginning I did not I did not know, uh, and I don't think anyone could tell what our opponent was playing. He's going to normal on Roxy's, he's going to go into me at my Mew, he's going to chain Roxy's, he's going to go ahead and go into the other monster's hand, and I'm just going to go, okay, cool, I have an Ash in hand by the way, but instead of using Ash immediately, I already get Phantasmic, it's some value, so that's what I'm going to do right here. Also, he chain blocked his um, his uh, Roxy's by using Parallel Exceed anyway, so that kind of put us in a damper. So we're going to go ahead and go into Phantasmic, and when you think about, about Phantasmic, whenever I draw Phantasmic, the two cards I'm ideally looking for is Shadow Fusion and Super Polymerization. Those are the two cards I'm really focusing on. So opponent's going to banish a card, and I really couldn't see what he banished from from my angle. Um... But he's going to go ahead and bring another Pranking Monster out. Now, <coughs> now our opponent basically is, is, once again, from wild angle, it looks like our opponent is basically just going into Pranking Place. And he has a Parallax Seed. To me, that says Abyss Dweller. So he's going to activate Parallax Seed's effect. I'm going to figure out how many cards in hand, and I'm going to drop the Ash Blossom right here. Because in my mind, once again, that looks like full Pranking combo with an Abyss Dweller. So I can't have that happen. Abyss Dweller dropping down is definitely a problem for us. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and go into <laughs> into Phantasmic. I'm going to drop um, Abyss Dweller. And our opponent is going, oh man, you got everything. <laughs> and that's the thing with Prank Kids. I mean, our ratios, I'm not Prank Kids, I'm sorry. That's the thing with uh, Shadow Invoke. Our ratios are made for us to always at least have one hand trap. And, if we, and that hand trap could be a Phantasmic. That Phantasm can lead to like a draw on Lockbird or an Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. And like I said, our opponent is going to pop off this turn. He is going to hit almost everything he wants to hit. And his end board is going to be absolutely broken. I cannot wait to show it to you guys because it's absolutely insane. And then this deck just goes, all right. And we just walk right through it. And I think a lot, and you, you look at the comments, below, the comments to the right uh, of, of this live stream as, as people go like, oh yeah, you know, everything's cool to, all right, V. Give the game away. This game's done. You're done. Give it give it away. You're, it's, it's over. But when you're playing Shadow Invoked, you really can't. You got to go by the principle of... I always go by... by what I, like, I don't know how to call it. The principle of like percentages. I always play until I have a very low percentage of winning. And I always saw throughout this entire matchup against this deck, even when he had multiple negations on board, that there was a chance that we can not only come back in this game, but break his board, establish our own board. So that's why... I got to sit here and analyze this. I don't even care how long his combo is. I don't care how much time it burns because he's playing combo, by the way. We now know he's playing rocks. So I don't really worry about that as much. What I'm, t what I'm really focused on is basically uh, what what we are uh, trying to play against. <laughs> I like this guy we're playing against, by the way. This guy's another guy from Brooklyn. And he's a very chill Brooklyn guy, and I like that. You know, as a Brooklyn guy myself, I like talking to all my fellow guys, my fellow Pythons. Anyway, so looking at this game, once again, he's going to start establishing his board. And and what I'm doing right now, it, it may look like I'm chilling, I'm, I'm joking around laughing, having a good time. But what I'm honestly doing is working on establishing what he is playing and figuring out what he wants to do and learning and understanding. Um, that's my major thing. Also, if you guys comment, by the way, on the right side, there's no one I do remote those. I don't read comments. When, whenever I look to the right, what I'm looking at is the time in the top right and the bottom left of my screen, uh, which shows if the live stream is going good. I never really look at comments. Uh, I just One, because it, it really shouldn't. Um, two, it might be because of the coaching. I don't want anyone to get into that ballpark. And three, not for nothing, I love you guys, but some of the things you guys say just take, take my focus off the game. So what I do is once again, you'll see me look at the top right and the bottom left whenever I look to the side, the side of my screen. Um, going back into it, once again, I am I am just learning. I am the student right here. When I'm going, if I'm going second, I am the student. That's what I'm doing. I'm learning. I'm understanding. I'm evaluating. I'm seeing what they're trying to do, what they want to do, and I think I think that's something that everybody 
really should be focusing on. Figuring out what you look at. I'm seeing his top five. I, he just showed me he played Dark World No More in Main. Like, that's free information. So this is why I always find some point. You know, the game just started. We got 50 minutes on the clock. I'm going to use that time insanely wise, and wisely to learn as much as possible. To figure out everything my opponent is doing. Evaluating within the hand. Seeing within the graveyard. And texting my wife. <laughs> Making sure everything's okay with her. Um, anyway. So yeah, I, I, it's it's really important in these kind of matchups when you're doing it. Whenever you're doing a remote duel, even if you don't have good, let's say you look at your hand, it's just trash. If you scoop immediately, you learn nothing by playing by by sitting there and and, and seeing everything your opponent does. We learn everything. Like we learn, we know he plays Hardy Fellows during main now. Great information. We we know what they play upstart gobble, so they more than likely play a forty card deck. Ideally, we're just learning a lot right now. I'll point a fancy graveyard. Well, once again, we're going to look at that graveyard. We're going to analyze. We're going to figure out what they have in their graveyard. And this is something that, once again, I feel like a lot of players don't do. Like, if I'm doing my full combo, whatever deck I'm playing, and my point is, not, is just looking at their hand or filling with their fingers, like, you should be always be looking at my board constantly if you're going second. By the way, our opponent did play Talents and got rid of Phantasmia, which is great. Phantasmia served, served multiple purposes. Yes, I allowed him to link away. But what Phantasmic also allowed him to do is, uh, it was a target for his talents, meaning he didn't take a card on hand, he didn't activate talents with Pot of Greed, he just took a monster, which is great. Once again, we don't care about that at all. You know, talents is just giving us, giving us a lot of information. And once again, this is this is this is just gonna show us. Our opponent, <laughs> our opponent also is, is not com like 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 I'm very calm. Okay, another thing I do as a player, which I think a lot of people should always do, is win or lose, good hand or bad hand, just when you're playing, just go you know to have the same kind of tone and uh, same kind of yeah, no, it's fine, no, it's fine. My hand can be terrible, and I'll, I'll be the same way. And our opponent is just going like, why are you so comfortable? Why you I don't feel comfortable that you're comfortable. <laughs> but that's how you gotta be as a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh player, like like good hand or bad hand. I'm always gonna go, yeah, it's fine. Like one of the comments, we got nerves of steel. Yeah, no, I'm just, I, I'm comfortable, I'm confident, I'm having a good time. Let's see. So, so let me just pause right quickly here. And we're going to see what he got on board. We know he's a rock in hand. He's going to show us a rock, by the way. There's there's the uh, uh, Quacky Mirror right there for no monster negation. There's the Appaloosa with three negates on it. That's a Borderlord Savage Dragon with two on two. And that's a Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. We will break this board. Just know that we will break this board. All right. So our opponent is, uh, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, anyone in our opponent's position should feel co confident. But should no one vote, is, our deck is made to do what we're about to do here, okay? Like, we are made to do this. Uh, we're mostly meant to fight dragons, we'll definitely fight rocks, just as easily. So our opponent's just going, hey man, end phase I want to show you, and then he shows another Quacky Mirror, and I'm like, god damn. So he has two. Uh, so what we're doing right now is we're figuring out what's in his board. We're figuring out our hand. We're just trying to analyze. We're getting as much information as possible. We are still the student. And then we play our first card now with a teacher. So we're going to bring out Prankatops. This card, I, I got to say, this is one of those cards that I didn't like like or feel comfortable for at all. But Prankatops is one. Is, I'm definitely comfortable with Prankatops. I, I really, 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 really like this card a lot. Uh, it definitely is has been very useful for me. So that's a Shadow all dragon I brought up. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get any other Shadow all give me value. Obviously, if I had like Skumada, that would be ideal. Uh, uh, even a Hedgehog would be ideal. So I'm going to probably immediately. I, I got to get rid of some cards on his board. Um, on his board right now, he has Wind, uh, Dark, uh, Wind, and Earth. And we're just going to go ahead and go right into a, um, a Winda. Oh, we're not even done yet, by the way. So hold on. So that's so that's it. We're, we're like like we're just getting started, Paisanos. <laughs> and already we got rid of one immediate threat, and we are threatening two other cards on his board. So this is how you have to analyze it. Uh, we got rid of one immediate threat, and we have two cards on board that we can run over with the current two cards we have. So so right now he's technically still plus one, and then we're gonna drop super uh, should all fusion. Um, once again, these are things you always gotta look for when, when you're playing a, uh, a Phantasme. It's always gonna be Shadow Fusion Super Pot. Fusion, if you're going second. 
uh, going first, uh, um, and you, you still probably after you made your going first board. That's really situational, but this is basically what you what you want to do. So we're gonna activate Shadow Fusion. Uh, you know, we're, we're gonna figure out what we're gonna bring out. Which ideally, I think we're gonna we bring out here is an App Cologne. Um, now, once again, we have Wind on board, so we can't special summon anything else. But we got now three good exchanges. Now, ideally, what, you, what I want to do is go to Anaconda if I can. I'm not sure I could. So we got to figure out, like... So, so my opponent is asking if he, if, if, he, if he will have the opportunity to negate App Cologne. And I'm explaining what App, App Cologne is. With Shadow Fusion, it's App Cologne. Two shadow monsters, and then I and then I resolve the chain, and he can negate the last on the chain, but he cannot negate the you know you know what I'm saying anyway, chain links. All right, so I immediately realized that we gotta bait him. <laughs> My last card that's gonna be resolving more than likely would not resolve in any way, shape, or form. So we gotta figure out how like how to make sure that he doesn't get values, and we still somehow get value. So Apcon's gonna get rid of his crystal wing. It's gonna, it's gonna blank his crystal wing out, and that's huge because crystal wing is a problem. I don't believe anything else on board to realistically is a problem for me besides Crystal Wing. And looking looking at it and evaluating the board, I think we're in a really really good spot here. Um, Crystal Wings, I think, is the only card that's kind of problematic. Um, the last card resolved. Point showing is a graveyard, which which is kind of like I did not think this card was going to resolve. <laughs> like 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 Aria was the the throwaway card in this instance, but he is saying, hey man, which one? Um, which is kind of cool. <laughs> so I'm evaluating the prank kid portion of his deck because any prank kid can allow him to recycle. Uh, I don't know how many prank kids he has. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know the full stint, uh, stint of this rock board. So I'm just trying to get rid of as many prank kids as possible in case he does go into a uh, do to do and recycle advantage. I'm, that's probably not the best play. But given the circumstance, that's what I want to. I, I just wanted to remove the situation. Okay. So we still haven't had a normal summon at all, and this is all. By the way, these are brand new sleeves uh, for this game. So we haven't had a normal summon at all, but I've. There's a good. We're gonna be able to break almost everything in this board, you know. So what we're gonna do is okay. So upon us one in hand, we we already know it's a Quacky Mirror. We hundred percent know it's Quacky Mirror, right? We're gonna go ahead and break this entire board. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, which is hilarious. All right, so we're gonna go prank tops over to Appaloosa. Uh, we're gonna summon. We're gonna have the um uh. My winner swung into his rock, which made oh okay. My winner swung into his rock, and then I'm gonna use prank tops, blow up his last monster, and then swing twenty five. Okay, okay. So we are we are back in the driver's seat. And then we're going to swing 25. So our end board against rocks is one monster that's known in hand. That we're going to set, by the way, because we still haven't set nothing. Appaloosa and Winda. So now we put him back on. You now have to stop what we can do. And I'm pretty sure there's nothing he, that I know of that he can play that can get around this. Um, he has a Quacky Marrow. <coughs> he has a Quacky Marrow. He, he has a bunch of stuff. But once again, the, the deck just does what it does. It breaks boards. And Super Poly was a pretty important card in this instance. But it wasn't like a necessity. Like it was another shuttle fusion that would still be huge because he would more than likely negate it with the world of savage. And then we would commence going into a combo, breaking through everything else. So I don't I, like it was just one of two cards that we really did it did put work in. And then we win that on board, it's just gonna lock him up, and I think this is where he just we, we scoop it up to the next game. Yeah. So we go to the next game. Um Hold on a sec. I'm just going to fast forward for you guys. Okay. So our opponent's going to go first. And now here's the thing. <clears throat> we, I, you know, I rarely use Nibiru in the side deck. I really, really do. And I think, I think if you play this deck, you will find yourself not using Nibiru all the time. But Nibiru is insanely important as every other card in my side deck is. Like, I, I think Nibiru is absolutely important. And here's why. Uh, Nibiru is, and I, I don't know what tier you want to consider this deck, uh, the, the Rock and Metapace. I say 1.5, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, 
but I, I do think there are a lot of rogue decks as well that Nibiru can impact. And I like that Nibiru can be used in those matchups and, and can turn a tie by itself in those matchups. So much so that it warrants it being in the side deck. And I feel like a lot of people always debate on Nibiru. Um, some people even want to put it in the main deck, which I feel is incorrect because if you play Nibiru in the main deck against a Shadow Invoke player, they're going to laugh at you because you'll never resolve that card. Oh, but V, I can send it away for uh, um, a Construct. Yeah, it's not how you do it. It's not how that... Like, you don't want to play Blind Light Target in your deck. That makes zero sense. Um, so we do have Nibiru in our hand. And I'm just... Once again, there, there, uh, you become the student. You go second, you always become the student. I'm analyzing. We want to make sure we can practice Nibiru. Because that's very important, obviously. Now, he, he just put the Nibiru... Uh, he, 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 he's going into, I believe, his Pranked Plays. And... So he could have added the Quacking Barrow to negate my Nibiru, but he decided not to, which is a big deal. So I'm looking at my hand. I'm figuring out he's going to try to get some value with the, um, uh, he's going to get value. He's going to get rid of the Ash Blossom and bring another Prank Kid Monster out. He's going to resolve his Roxy, so he's going to be able to draw a card. He's going to have two in hand. And this is what I'm constantly analyzing. And I'm saying this to myself when I, whenever I play, this is exactly what I said to myself. He has two in hand. He has that. He got rid of an Ash Blossom. So he might have another one in hand if he dumped the second one. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop the beer. And I'll pull this and be like, man, what the heck? Who hurt you? <laughs> like I said, guys, this is a great live stream. If, if you guys want to check more amazing live stream like this, check me out on Twitch. Uh, <laughs> we're playing against a point of It's like, yo, what's your problem, bro? Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's great <laughs> he's like he's like are you happy man are you happy with yourself um but listen the boo dropping down here is huge and with him with only two cards in hand i don't i'm pretty sure he can't go into full combo obviously the only question is what can he end on at this point and he saw his emancipated signs which is a big deal like that card is absolutely crazy um, it can allow him to reset combo, and, and I go back back in the student mode. Like, don't get me wrong, this guy made me laugh. Like, this guy had me laughing this whole match, uh, joking, you know, hanging out, joking around, should be chill. But like, I, I, there's a phase. I'm back into I need to learn as much as possible mode um, to see what he can go into because I, I only got four in hand now. Like that Nibiru has to put work in for me, or I need to find a way to gain value. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I told him I said you show me prank kids and all I saw was red because that's yeah, I not that I hate prank kids but I've had problems with prank kids in the past I saw a prank kid and I just immediately my brain shut down so once again I'm still learning though like you saw those two dark roll no more that's important that means he has to have that what's the but senses of a chance with two cards in hand that I'll point out to dark roll no more and and having dark roll no more going first is it worth it even if he does have doesn't matter I don't know if it does. I don't think it does. So he's still doing a lot of plays. He's going to get to be able to practice Raptite now. And they're, they're, so he's, so obviously, I think at this point, he's just looking for a tuna. Uh, <laughs> he has everything except the tuna. And, 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 and that's like the minute he said it, the minute I was like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you don't got it. Like, what do you do here? You know, like, what do you get? <laughs> uh, he's in a really, really tight spot. I, I feel like. He ideally was looking for a tuner. Any tuner definitely would have got him back in. in. Um, like, like when you're off the top, would have helped him get there. So his special use effect, add the Quacky to his hand. He's still slowly recoup his hand. And once again, if we're playing a slower game, we're playing a slower type of deck. And this is why Dogmatic invokes your those. They can't do what this deck can do. And this is very important. Like, like, not, like, they can't go. Okay, I need to be more aggressive now because he's trying to recoup his hand after getting blown up by Nibiru. They can't do that play. This deck can. This deck can go. All right, I'm gonna put him on it immediately. Where, where, where the other variant should only invoke dogmatic, and that's why I don't really like that variant. Um, and I know a lot of people are like, well, V, you know, some people have different play styles. Great, that's awesome. But like, not for nothing, your play style can't come back after this match. Can't come back in this matchup like my deck can. Now he goes Abby Mascarena, and I'm going to do Phantasme. Here's the thing I love. Ready for it? Watch. Get ready to see it. Yeah. So he got rid of an Ash, and I remember said earlier that he might have another Ash. And there's the other Ash. Phantasme goes back in my hand. Now, here's the crazy part about it. Phantasme getting hit with Ash Blossom is amazing. If you were looking at Procrastinal Fusion. Because Ash Shadow Fusion hurts way more than Ash Phantasme. And I'd rather get my Phantasme hit with Ash all day of the week. I'm okay with that. 
hit my Phantasmay with Ash. I'll take it just as long as I go and I get the Proxional Fusion. Let's go. So we're in the driver's seat. And we're trying to figure out what our opponent wants to do. Now, Ivy Masquerade is definitely a problem card. And what I went, what I, what I tried doing is going into battle phase to try to push his uh, Ivy Masquerade, which can only be activated during the main phase. Once again, this is all part of the plan. Either, either you give me that Masquerade, or I um, you give me Masquerade, or you give me my main phase back, and you lose the Masquerade. So that's the thing with my Masquerade. Like, even though it's a great card, don't be wrong. Like, if your opponent has anything on board, they're gonna push your Masquerade. So he's going to go into a unicorn, unicorn, unicorn effect, and we're, we're immediately going to go into that construct that everybody wishes I could bring on, like, turn one. Uh, so we're going to get a ton of value here. We immediately exchange with him, but we're going to plus by doing it. So this is a construct. Construct's going to hit down. Now, construct can get us a show of fusion, basically. Because what you do is you go Construct, you send Shadow Fusion, you get rid of Construct with a Gravity Controller, and then you can just activate it. And I, th I think that's the play I'm looking to looking forward towards. So there we go. We're going we're, we're gonna to move everything nice and efficiently. And this is, I mean, this is the thing I think I, with a lot of players that play this game, like, it's really rare I'll, like, burn time trying to figure out what I'm trying to do. Uh, for the most part, should which should invoked once you, as you learn a deck as you get better at the deck I for, I feel personally and once again guys check me out on twitch twitch TV why Joe Paisano uh, But and you'll see it like I feel personally when as the more I play the show invoke deck The more quick my plays become because they're more solid. I know exactly what we need to do I know exactly what my opponent has I know what my opponent wants to do and this is all from learning You're, you're learning what you're, you're looking at your opponent's turn and you're reading every single one that plays You're trying to get as much information as possible and then as you're trying to get as much information as possible You at the same time in your brain going after I break his board because like if I if you had the ability to if you see you can do it What can I do follow-up play so all this has already been determined for me the only question is what else can I do? What else can I do to push past uh, the current board state my opponent is, is wanting to recover from? Because I feel like a lot of decks in this game right now can make a board, get board broken, and recover from boards. Like, I feel even Draggling can do that. And that one draw, that one draw of Beast Gods into Alistair, which is now going to get us there. <laughs> this was a great game against the opponent. I really like playing against this guy. I hope I like playing against this guy again. Uh, but this is the kind of thing which you could do which should don't invoke. Oh, look at my gums. Yikes. Hold on. Let's get rid of those gums. I don't want no gum shots. There we go. Look at that. Nice smile. Okay. Um, listen, this is the kind of thing this deck can do. And I feel like a lot of people that are looking to play should don't invoke Dogmatica, I don't think they can do boards as good as this. Their best board has to start with Nadia Sermon. And if that gets met with an Ash, what, what are they going to do? You know, what they got? I, 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 to be honest with you, I don't think not much. They're going to have to show on Volk Dogmatica. Not only did we break up opponent's board uh, in game one, in game two, we dropped a huge Nibiru on our opponent, which allowed us to just create a... I mean, they already knew what we had. And you can see the, the four cards right there. We did open double Phantasme. But look at our, look at the rest of the cards on hand. Like, we were going to get into a... Um, we were going to go ahead and go into a... Um, Invocation, and we had so many options. Invocation, we could have went invocation and banned from graveyard. We could do all that shenanigans, or what we, we could have done, which I think I would have done in this game, would have would, would have uh, got rid of Alistair and my um, other monster, my Alistair and um, it's been a long day. I'm like really tired, but Alistair and Apcolone go into a Predator Pan for the Anaconda, get Apcolone's effect, add us more Shadow monsters. Then we got a Shadow Fusion, uh, a way to go into Shadow Fusion. Uh, as well as the Invocation in Hand, as well as the App Clone. It was game this turn. 100% dead to rights. Uh, I think our opponents started writing on the wall already. They knew it. But uh, we 100% had way over to get over our opponent's board easily. And not only just get over our opponent's board, we, we really could have um, uh, we really could have um, set up for next turn uh, by ending on some crazy stuff as well. So, I mean, there's a lot of things we could have done in this game. Uh, but overall, we definitely had it here. Definitely um, make sure to hit the like button if you like, if you enjoyed this video, if you found this video entertaining, and if you learned something from this video. I know a lot of people watch our videos for different aspects of the, of of uh, of, of Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Some of you watch it for Shadow Invoked. Uh, you have to learn from this deck. Some of you watch it because they love hanging out with your boy V Paisano. 
Uh, some people like it because they want to see what this deck can do. And is this deck the choice over Shadon Volk Dogmatica? I'll tell you right now, looking at this past weekend's uh, Remoto event, that the guy that won with Shadon Volk Dogmatica, if you play this deck, you already know. But for those who don't, that deck is literally a snack for us. I, I would have walked through that kid. And I'm not, not to say the kid's a bad player or whatever, but this deck has such a good high win percentage over its counterpart, Shadon Volk Dogmatica. And I guarantee anyone play, would, I would have played this deck over the weekend would have been the real winner. Uh, because I feel like this deck had such a good matchup against that deck. Anyway, guys, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button. You have the subscribe button already. Uh, try to if you haven't tried it out already. I have a deck profile on the channel as well. And uh, check me out on Twitch TV. <laughs> hey, Paisanos. It's your boy, Veen. You, Paisanos? Well, you, Paisanos, have a great day. <laughs>